the two are Kaftai. Kaftai lo ulofa lo amdlei. Ne yaso mato abia. Fa imaya lo wanganga yate mato. Ine yamato faya neita koi. Yanama manfat maoni at the top. O oh, gracious God, God who lives and loves through each one. Meet us here today as we worship. We come with different identities, languages, as diverse people with differing limitations and abilities. We want to appear strong but yet we are weak and we seek your companionship constantly. We ask that you fill our spirits, our minds and our hearts. Teach us in our time together to accept one another as you have accepted each one already. Let this place be the vessel of healing and wholeness compassion and encouragement, strength and comfort. Have mercy on the world. Have mercy on your people, that we might with one voice give glory and praise to you.
contain it. When the thing I sought was lost, only to reappear within the hollow of my hand. When the day seems eternal, but at evening time the burden is swift, and weariness is a far off memory. When there opens before the vista of the mind the wonder of new regions, far off places. When the when gentle touch of love makes music heard only by the listening heart. When the doctor's word is the final word, and deep within the hidden places of the life, healing waters stir, bringing wholeness in their wake. When the wanderer comes home, and the wayward finds peace in the ancient fireside. When from the ashes of old dreams, the fires of a new life are kindled, Thou art there. Peace be with you this morning. And also with you. Let us pass the peace. Peace. Are you a hugger now? Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4. 
The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the very with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. To God who is great and powerful, glorious, splendid, and majestic. To God who rules everything by God's own strength and power. To God who is able to make anyone great and strong. To those who came before us, making it possible for us to be here today. Those like Dr. Dale P. Andrews, mentor and friend, whose laughter and leadership are missed in these hallways. And Father Vincent Machozzi, an alum who was killed on Palm Sunday just a few years ago in Congo, and later his mother also died. To the one I run to, to the Reverend Dr. Mary Elizabeth Moore, Dean of the School of Theology, to the Reverend Chad Kidd for extending this invitation to me, to Dr. David S. Jacobson, my dissertation advisor, and Dr. Theodore Hickman Maynard, my second reader, to all faculty and staff, to Brother Andrew Kimball and the worship team for their dedication in prayerfully coordinating this service, to the Dean's Fellows visiting us today, seminary singers, the guests, and community, it is my pleasure to join you from this pulpit once again, and especially on this Holy Week. Please join me in considering the topic, A Word for the Weary. A Word for the Weary. May we pray. Dear God, I pray that we, your people, are open to receiving a word from you, however difficult or challenging it may be. And I pray that I, your preacher, that I preach not a word more or a word less than that which you've given me to preach. Amen. Amen. A word for the weary. A word for the weary. If we spend time with scripture, we come to understand that weariness is part of life. The scriptures abound with people who experience what it is to be weary, and the scriptures also abound with verses about weariness. For example, come unto me, all ye that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In Galatians we learn, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And in Luke, we hear an unjust king saying, Because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continuing coming she weary me. And then, of course, Isaiah, one of the ones that are probably the most popular amongst all the scriptures, but they that wait upon God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Jesus himself must have known what it felt like to be weary. He spent years in ministry with a group of people who should have known him, who should have trusted him, who should have felt comfortable with him. But there comes a point where even Jesus himself senses that something is not right. Sometime after the joy of Palm Sunday, Jesus says, my soul is troubled. He continues preaching to those around him, and when he is finished speaking, he leaves and he hides himself from them. Imagine a preacher hiding. <laughs> and then he reappears and performs so many signs in the presence of other people, but they still would not believe in him. Jesus starts to sense that his life is in danger, and he senses that someone is going to betray him. And John concludes all of Jesus' feelings with a statement, Jesus was troubled in spirit. Beloved, the same man who once declared, come on to me, all of you who are weary, and I will give you 
rest now finds himself feeling weary. So before the famous dinner and the betrayal of Monday Thursday, before the crucifixion of Good Friday, before the uncertainty of Holy Saturday, before the glory of Easter Sunday, we have what I would call Messy Monday, Troubling Tuesday, and Weary Wednesday. Weary Wednesday. We often associate weary with tired. The two are related, but they're actually quite different. To be tired, I'm sure you know about this, is to wake up early, hear the alarm push, snooze a few times, drag oneself to the shower, and eventually make it to class or work while waiting for Friday. <laughs> to be weary is to wake up early, hear the alarm, press snooze, drag oneself to class, then go to work for an incompetent boss, then work another job and pay taxes for a scandal-ridden government. To be weary is to run with perseverance the race that is set before you, see the finish line just ahead, cross it in time to receive a participant's medal and a bottle of water. But to be weary, beloved, is to run and run and run with a finish line nowhere in sight. To be tired is to flip through the channels and see news of yet another shooting in a neighborhood not too far away, but to be weary is to attend your sibling's funeral, then your cousin's funeral, then your best friend's funeral, and then wonder about your own funeral. Tired refers to the body. Tired can be fixed with a few more minutes of sleep after the snooze, a drink of water at the finish line, or the turn of a channel after seeing bad news. But weary, weary is embodied. Tired refers to the body, but weary is embodied. It is deep within. It is a part of one's very being. There is no snooze. There is no drink of water. There is no turning of the channel. Tired refers to the body, but weary is embodied. And so what does one do for the weary? What does one say to the weary? In Isaiah 50, verse 4, part of the lectionary reading for today, we are given a hint. And so the scripture begins, God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Well, writer, who are you that God would give you, of all people, the ability or the knowledge to sustain the weary with a word? Who are you, yes, you, writer, that God would entrust you, of all people, with such a responsibility, or dare I say, ministry? Whether the writer is the prophet Isaiah, a group of people, someone responding to earlier passages, or someone thinking ahead to the life of Jesus, all we know is that God has given me, says the writer. This ability, this knowledge comes from God. Beloved, when you enrolled at this institution, did you do so simply to pay tuition? or to take out loans, or to earn another degree? Or was there something deeper that pulled you into this place? When you accepted that position to pastor a church in the middle of nowhere and earn a salary the equivalent of a donation,
Many of us embarked on this journey or are thinking about embarking on this journey because of the conviction that God has something to do with it, that God has given us this opportunity, this ministry. Otherwise, why would we bother? Why would we bother entering a training session that would not guarantee us a job in the traditional sense of the word? Why would we do that? Why would we enter a space that questions our beliefs and, and challenges us to question our own beliefs? Why would we do that? And so the writer confidently states, God, God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. And though this writer is confident about who has given the gift, the writer also makes a confession. The writer has been given the tongue of a teacher, but lacks the knowledge of a teacher, and wants to know how, how to sustain the weary with a word. The writer's confession about needing to know how is one that we often struggle with, though we are not quick to admit it. But just because God has given us a gift, and just because we are confident about that gift, does not mean that we know how to use that gift. No. If I told you right now that there was a big sack of money, and I was going to give it to you right now, I'm certain that each of us would say that we would know exactly what to do with it. Some of us will pay off student loans. Uh-huh, I see people raising their hands. Some of us would pay off student loans. Some of us would buy a house. Some of us would buy a car. Some of us would run to our own deserted island and never return. We know exactly what we would do with that money. But then after some point, we would realize that our dreams perhaps are not sustainable, and we would need to be taught how to use such a large amount of money to carry us through into those golden retirement years. So the writer continues, morning by morning, God wakens. God wakens my ear to listen as though we are taught. Listen as those who are taught. Listen as one who wants to be taught. So this confession turns into an act of humility. Wake up, stay woke, listen, and be taught. Wake up, stay woke, listen, and be taught. Taught through school, yes. Taught through apprenticeship, yes. Taught through the one who has given us this gift. And so, beloved, if we are to be the ones to sustain the weary with a word, we must be willing to learn over and over and over again. Perhaps we will be the one. Perhaps we will be the one to speak a word to sustain the weary, when perhaps that weary one is one of our own. Called Jesus, called me, called you. But that can't happen unless we are willing to go beyond this confidence about the gift that we are given and go into a state of confession and then enter into a stage of learning so that we can sustain the weary with the word. If we want to sustain the weary with the word, we have to know what the weary are going through. We can't do that only through social media. How else would we know what the weary are going through? We can't be the ones taking the photographs of our arrest and posting it so quickly to a social media site because those who are arrested know the impact of arrest and most never want anyone in the world to know about it. So if we are going to be the ones to sustain the weary with the word, then we must wake up 
morning after morning after morning and be willing to learn. So if you right now find yourself in a state of weariness because you're having difficulty going to class, because you're having difficulty going to work, because you feel like you can't take another step, morning by morning, God wakens me. God wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. A word for the weary. It is up to you, it is up to me to figure out what it is that we are going to say and to do. A word for the weary must become flesh. Amen. Stephon Curry, 
comfort the family, the community, the loved ones, all those that are hurting and discouraged, oh God, through this injustice. Lord, we echo the sentiments of Dr. King in his words where he said, where do we go from here? Will it continue to be chaos or community? As we continue to walk in love and unity, oh God, we say where there's, if there's injustice anywhere, oh God, it's a threat to justice everywhere. Lord, we ask you to bless us, that you would take us as we go forth, oh God, as we embark upon Holy Week. Bind us together as one in love and unity. In your precious name of Jesus Christ, amen.
We have violence in our communities, unemployment and underemployment, mounting student debt, diagnoses of cancer, HIV AIDS, government corruption, online and in-person bullying, mental illness, immigration status of concern. When we encounter weariness, we understand something that is challenging about its very nature. For weariness contains an element of hopelessness. Sustain the weary, keep the weary going. Offer hope in an otherwise hopeless situation. Be with God and be with the people of God so that we know that weariness is real and God's people are real. Beloved of God, as you move forward, be gentle with yourselves and be gentle with God's people, just as God is gentle with you. Amen.